And you might now be thinking, oh, but they're talking about... Well, load shedding it is. If you know who you're voting for in the 2024 elections, who, how, like, who is there? Like, like next year's elections are going to be the most important since 1994 when South Africa became a democracy. This might be the first time that the ANC doesn't get a 50% plus one vote majority. This is the first time that individual citizens can run on their own as candidates don't need a political party. There are political rematches between old foes all over the map. Malema against his old party, the ANC. Maimane and Mashaba with their own political parties facing off against their old party, the Democratic Alliance. We have a convicted gangster running a political party and winning votes all over South Africa. And people don't know who to vote for. And the results of all the local elections we've been having in the last two years have been hard to read because yes, the ANC and the DA have been losing to people like the Freedom Front Plus, people like the IFP, people like the EFF, but they've also been holding their position and even growing in other areas. So it's really hard to make a convincing prediction or any significant read about what's gonna happen in next year's 2024 presidential elections. And yet, President Ramaphosa recently said that anyone who thinks the ANC won't win next year's elections is silly. Which is mad, because the ANC has been such a disaster. So, let's talk about next year's elections. Who is running for power? What are their strengths and weaknesses? Who might win the election? What might actually even happen, especially if the ANC drops below 50%? This is the issue with the 2024 national elections. And we have to start with the African National Congress. I'm sure you felt it recently. South Africans have been talking about it nonstop, about this sense of hopelessness all around the country. This sense that nothing is getting better. Everything is worse than it was and falling apart from a few years ago. And that's all the ANC. They've had an absolute majority for such a long time, for our whole country's democracy since 1994. And everything is falling apart. ESCOM, total shambles. And remember that our current president was on the special action committee to fix ESCOM like 10 years ago now. Load shedding has been born, been a toddler, gone through primary school. They're about to pick their matric subjects. That's for how long ESCOM has been a shambles. Let's talk about roads. The potholes have potholes. It is so bad at this point in most of South Africa that people are kind of half joking, but seriously moving to Cape Town because the roads are decent. People are uprooting their entire lives to save their back because they're like, you know what? Cape Town is filthy expensive. But you know what's more expensive? Paying for a physio, a chiropractor, MRIs, x-rays, and a wheelchair when I'm older from how bad the roads are. It's a mess just to try to drive. Unemployment, still getting worse. Youth unemployment stats in South Africa are the worst in the whole world. And it's so hectic because when you look at the unemployment figures, it's us in Nigeria over 30%. And then the third and fourth are like low 20s to high teens. I think we as South Africans don't even take seriously how much worse we are in terms of employment. Healthcare, awful. Hospitals, getting burned down, not getting fixed quickly. Ambulances, getting robbed in the streets. There was a hospital in the north of the country where the doctors got in trouble for putting newborn babies in cardboard boxes. But why did they do that? Because the department hadn't provided them incubators for these children. And this is all the government. This is all the ruling party. This is all the ANC. They're not in coalition. This is all on them. Their care to deployment, their people for decades. And when it comes to voting, you've got to be likable. You've got to be the kind of person people like that they want to have around, to have in power. And the ANC does so many unlikable things. Most recently, the new vice president, Paul Mashatile, his VIP protection unit goons, beat the living shit out of two everyday South Africans on the side of the road. Paul claimed he wasn't in the car. It seems now he was in the fucking car. And I don't care how tinted your windows are, your goons stopped on the side of the road. That happened, whether you think they were relieving themselves or not. So if the ANC is watching this country decay, doing nothing about it, ransacking the state through corruption. Remember Digital Vibes? That was really not a long time ago. Why are they still so confident that they're going to win this next election? Surely in a healthy democracy, that kind of party would lose. They'd be booted out. I think there are three reasons why Ramaphosa can be so confident that the ANC will win again. It's political infrastructure, his own popularity, and how terrible, how shamefully, embarrassingly bad 
all the opposition parties are. Let's talk about political infrastructure. All over the world, the way that you win elections is you have people going door to door, speaking to people on different streets, different homes, different communities, and saying, I personally, I to you right now say, this is who you should vote for. I believe that this is the best party or the best individual to lead this country and the best for us, you and me, on this street, on this corner, right now. That is so much more compelling to people and persuasive than faces or names on a ballot or people shouting on YouTube, ironically, because it's the human connection right now. The ANC is the only political party that is everywhere in this country. Every neighborhood, every community, every town, every city, every Dorpi has a branch, probably a youth organization, a women's league. They are everywhere. No other political party in this country has that. Not even close, not even a dent. So already the ANC has the political infrastructure to win. Then there's Ramaphosa's popularity. Because sure, he's taken some knocks in the last few years, but he is still by a mile, by all polls, the most popular South African politician that there is. The ANC definitely knows this. He radically outcompetes them in popularity. And the final reason, whether you want to hear it or not, South Africans' opposition parties are absolutely shockingly bad. Like, if I was them, I would be so embarrassed because the shambles that I just described to you, the absolute disaster, which is the ANC's reign, how in that context, with so much ammo, with so much anger and frustration and disappointment amongst the population, has no political party been able to mount even a vaguely credible challenge? At this point, it's so bad that I feel like if a Parktown prawn ran for power, it would beat all the opposition parties. So let's look at these opposition parties' strengths and weaknesses. What could be going wrong? Because democracy is always about picking the best of a bunch of bad options, but if the ANC is the best mm, of the options, let's start with the biggest opposition party, the Democratic Alliance, seemingly with the best chance of mounting a credible challenge to the ANC. And yet, I don't think they've ever been further away from being able to do so as they are right now. They've got big problems. They've got a leadership that is radically uninspiring, like radically bad at leading, at rallying at dancing to John Gate, But they've also got a problem with whiteness. Now, I'm not saying that having white leadership is a problem. I'm just saying that if your party has a specific issue that most of the country thinks that your party is the hangover of apartheid and all the old apartheid voters and apologists are voting for you, then if you don't have effective black leadership, you have a problem. And if black people consistently leave, you've got a really big problem. You know that saying, when there's smoke, there's fire? It means when there's smoke, there's probably a fire. Like if there are one or two allegations of something, then eh, it might be true. But if there are a lot of allegations, a lot of smoke, there's probably a fire. Because the more smoke there is, and the less likely it is that that smoke is coming from, you know, a candle or a vape or the exhaust pipe of a really old car. And you start to hear fire engine sirens and you think maybe there's a fire and I mean, really, this leadership. Helen Ziller is still there telling us that colonialism brought good things to Southern Africa that otherwise would never have come here or couldn't have come here in any other way, like running water and bricks. Then there's John Steenhuisen, the human hardy dar. Like seriously, next time you hear him speak, just close your eyes. You'll never be able to unhear it. And the unlikability is a problem even in lower positions of power, like J.P. Smith with the taxi strikes when he inflamed tensions and made the whole situation far worse by on his own steam saying that he for any burned or attacked bus would just impound 25 taxis as like a punishment to the whole industry abstractly. And that made the whole situation way worse. And the people who ended up suffering were the people of Cape Town, the widest city, who need those taxis, who needed them back for transport, for money, for the functioning of their lives. The DA has a serious likability crisis. And strategically, they've also pivoted from the Musi Mamane days of trying to appeal to the whole country and get voters from everywhere, to trying to keep the minority votes. They're fighting with the Freedom Front Plus for conservative, often bigoted white voters right now. So the strategy, the likability, the alienating of black leaders and voters, DA, it's not happening. 
Next up is the economic freedom fighters. Now, what does their future hold? It depends on who you ask. Some people say that Julius Malema, particularly after the Kill the Boer song, it's his latest incredibly provocative stunt, which, let's be clear, is another example of the fact that whatever you think about his positions, he is an incredible politician. Maybe the most talented, an absolutely world-class politician. That doesn't make him good or bad, don't misunderstand me. But when politics are about always being the center of the, of attention in the spotlight the one who is talked about the most that's how you get people to consider you and take you seriously as someone to vote for the eff doesn't have the political structures that the anc does to be in every community all the time canvassing going door to door the next best strategy is extremely effective which is to be in the media spotlight all the time for better or worse no publicity is bad publicity and he's so good at that but depends on who you ask, because he runs very divisive messages. He inflames lots of people. Some say the Kill the Boer song was harmless. Other people say that it was fundamentally divisive. And that's a problem if you're trying to get an enormous groundswell of votes. Also, the EFF have the problem of having risen on the identity of being disruptors. They lead a protest to shut down a clicks here. They get thrown out of parliament there, or they storm out of government. They interrupt speeches. And there's that old saying, I can't remember if it's from the Bible or maybe the Old Testament that you call one person to knock down a house and you call the other person to build it again. And it's never the same person. And I think the EFF is gonna have a problem for a while until they start governing municipalities and doing a really good job and showing that they can rule and provide good governance, that people are gonna perceive them as the immature party or at least the one which is really good at disrupting but not good at building. Next is the IFP, the Inkata Freedom Party, for the longest time the party of Zulu people in KZN. They got absolutely eviscerated when Zuma was the president of the ANC because he took all those Zulu votes to the ANC. But since then, particularly with the Zuma mess and the Ramaphosa mess, lots and lots and lots of voters in KZN have gone back to the IFP. So they're making trouble for the ANC in KwaZulu Natal. But anywhere else, non-existent. Then there are a few big names who've started smaller parties of their own like Herman Mashaba. He did really well in the local government elections in Gauteng just now. And that was because he impressed a lot of people when he was the DA mayor in Gauteng. But his party, Action SA, doesn't have the political infrastructure, doesn't have enough money yet or enough of a footprint or an impact all over the country to really cause a problem. Then poor old Musi Maimane. The most common thing that people say about him these days when they hear his voice is, what happened to him? Where did he go? What is he doing? Because it turns out that he has started a political party called Build One South Africa, BOSA, or B-O-S-A, but he just hasn't been able to make the impact on South Africa's consciousness such that people even know that he is running, which makes it very unlikely that he's going to get any votes. Then there's much smaller political parties. The Freedom Front Plus has a very specific kind of person who will vote for them. Not that many people, very specific, but I'm sure they'll hold on to them. Patricia DeLille's good party has kind of plateaued. They take some votes off of the DA, particularly in colored communities. And they're both being decently challenged in some areas by the Patriotic Alliance now, which was formed in 2013 by, and this is true, convicted gangster Gayton McKenzie and are now taking a fair chunk of votes off of the DA and good in a ton of places, particularly colored communities across the country. Although they keep running into this kind of not surprising problem that once they get to power in a place, we quickly find out that the people they've put in power committed some criminal acts, have committed criminal acts before. So it's hard to see with all these political parties where the challenge is going to come from. There's no inspiring leader who's capturing the hearts and minds of the vast swathe of the voting public of South Africa. There's no political party that is blowing minds and taking hearts. You know what I'm saying? And some people are saying, oh, but it's fine. Next year, for the first time, independents, individual candidates will be able to run for political office at the highest level without a political party. Zaki Ahmad, I think, has said quite a few times that he's intending to run, and there are a couple of others. But the problem goes right back to the beginning. How is one person going to compete with a massive political machine that has thousands of operators on the ground knocking on doors, convincing people to vote? That is huge funding to put them in public spaces, to put them in FNB Stadium, filling it up, to put them in the media spotlight. I mean, maybe Sia Khaleesi could do it, but no one else, not even him. And you might now be thinking, ah, oh, but they're talking about Well, load shedding it is. 
So now you might be thinking, ah, oh, but Dan, what about some kind of dream rainbow coalition where all the opposition parties get together and decide to pull their support behind one person next year and tell all of their voters to vote for this one person? Maybe that will create a large enough political mass to fight the ANC. And to that I say, never going to happen. You know how I know? Because we've seen in all of these failed coalitions in these big cities where if all the opposition parties unite together, they have the collective power, enough votes and support to elect a mayor to lead in Swane, in Johannesburg and all these other places. Even when the EFF chooses to stick with the ANC, they still have enough power to put a mayor in and over and over those coalitions fall apart because obviously all political parties are still self-interested and maybe they don't want smaller political parties to get attention, particularly in the case of the DA. They don't want an action SA mayor because that will give more attention and a potential success story to their rivals. Similarly, there are a lot of smaller opposition parties that don't want to work with the DA. They've accused them of being bullies and trying to strong arm their own way because they're often the biggest opposition party in these potential coalitions, but also because they want to weaken the DA. They want to pull it down so they can rise up, take away some of their voters, as many of them have. And finally, these coalitions often don't work because a lot of these opposition parties, they know that their voters, their supporters hate the other opposition parties too. A lot of people vote for Action SA because they're hutful of the DA. So now Action SA can't easily, in good conscience, go in to shared political power with the Democratic Alliance. So what is possible? Well, the ANC might win 50% plus one vote majority. And then they can rule on their own. But if they fall beneath 50%, which a lot of polls have been showing is possible, then there's a game to be played because then they need to go into coalition with someone. And it depends on how many percent they need. They could go into partnership with one party. They could go into partnership with a small group of parties. And it will be an interesting situation because on the one hand, a lot of opposition parties will want to be the chosen party because they will want the power for their leaders. They will want the exposure to be able to do these important jobs, this important work. But on the other hand, they don't want to be going into bed with the ANC if they've run their entire campaign on trying to unseat the ruling party. So. That's, I think, where the real question lies. And so, who are we gonna vote for? I personally don't know yet, because everybody's looking a bit cuck, to be honest. And I'm waiting to see who will move me the most before next year's election. Who is the best of the bad options? But I think what could be playing on a lot of people's minds if they choose not to vote for the ANC is, who do I choose? Because I'm not really choosing who I think would make a good ruler, ruling party, because they're not going to be the ruling party. Is it a party that will do what I like if they are the chosen party with the ANC? That's interesting. And that, I think, is the issue with the 2024 elections.